The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best, juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat and four sides, mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corner beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing! Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family bbq.com for more info this man needs medical attention holmberg's morning sickness the old method of treatment for a person in this condition was to throw him in and we got ourselves a brady report coming up in seconds before that time to remind you that in fact we will be having our uh the narrow double down the nero i don't think is as impressive to go to the italian american club as it would be to get paulie but through that conversation, we have sparked the idea that Brett speaks with a prominent Italian segment <laughs> to get you your own segment every – and even if it's terrible, it'll just run on the rewind on Saturday morning <laughs> to get you to talk. And then my dream for that segment would be that we don't have any prominent Italians that'll do it except Polly Walnuts. So it's just Thursdays with Polly, <laughs> And you and Polly Walnuts have a chat. Correspond. Every week about just the goings on on the planet. Oh, that'd be amazing. Just the two of you. I'd leave you alone completely. Just go in another room. I've got another Polly interview. Polly's takes with Brett. Oh. <laughs> and at the Italian American Club oh. would be the only thing. It's like, look, Polly, we're going to fly you out, set you up. You got to go to dinner at the Italian American Club with Brett. I think he'd say yes. I don't think an Italian can turn that down. Like, if you even got that offer from just somebody and said, hey, Dallas, this weekend, I want you to come by. I'll pay for everything. Get yourself in that Italian-American club. You coming? <laughs> Heck, yeah, I'll be there. You, like, fly over in a heartbeat. You guys can't not be with each other. So, we got to set that up, Richard. Paulie Walnuts and Brett. Uh, the 8 o'clock De Niro Double Down will get you a word uh, in about 25 minutes, and you can win $1,000. $20,000 in 20 days to celebrate 20 years of this nonsense uh, going on. Your radio right here at KUPD. Gosh, thanks. What a 20 years it's been. Yay. Celebrate us. Uh, oh, my goodness. Brady, it's happening again. You realize? Yom Kippur? Yeah, that's right. Day of Atonement? That's right. And also, Wings Day? Also known as Wings Day. <laughs> Yom Kippur's original name was Wings Day. Yeah, yeah. Feeling good on a Wednesday. Shalom. It's Day at Hooters. Buy 20 wings, get 10 for free. Oh, my God. It is Yom Kippur. <laughs> <laughs> the word 10 free is involved this is great all day every wednesday dine in or take out you know it goes great with wings and ice cold bud light is there anything that uh the jewish faith uh can eat or not eat on a yom kippur that i don't know about i don't know i don't either where's larry is there fasting involved in the day of atonement a lot of that. brady you wouldn't be involved in any religion that includes it's a tough one there's a no tough f- part of it i think brady i think america hates that uh, middle eastern religion so much because they got that 40-day ramadan thing they don't eat i fast what one or two hour no fasts. that's right you have those while you're sleeping it's got to be yeah, a nightmare all a, that fasting it's a night fast uh hooters and bud light bring you this brady report brady report it good wednesday morning to you Phoenix, I, good Wednesday morning to you, Phoenix. Yeah, Hello, yeah, world! Feeling good on a Wednesday. Got a couple of baseless fun facts. The Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters yeah. could make 300 million small... Based on height and width. Yeah. 300 million? Yep. Wow. Give or take a couple. Well, you make them a little bigger than most. <laughs> be, be about 150 uh, Brady s'mores. 300 million to the rest of us. <laughs> Fiat is actually an acronym. Fix it again, Tony. We know. Nope. Fabrica Italiano Automobili Torino, which stands for Italian Automobile nope. Factory of Turin. Huh. So they spelled it wrong. I'll go with fix it again, Tony. Automobile Factory. What is it? Of Turin. Uh, what, what was the first part, though? Fabrica. Fab- no, no, no. The translation. Italian Automobile Factory oh, of Turin. I- a F T. Yeah. So it's an I aft, not a fiat. Yeah, but I guess you. Well, it's easier to say fiat. That's an actual thing. I aft would have been 
the same. Or, yeah, I aft. I aft. The first vending machine ever was in Egypt in the first century, and it dispensed holy water. It's called a river. Throw your coin in there. You put money in and it would shoot water at you? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. So it was a it's guy on the other side of a wall with a hose. You just gave yeah. him a, an Egyptian coin and he would hit you in the face with some... Huh. It wasn't uh, like what we know as vending machines. It didn't have a slot and you couldn't shake the water yeah. out. <laughs> in Arizona, it's illegal to feed garbage to pigs without a permit. There's an exception. If you're only feeding your own household garbage to your own pigs... Oh. <laughs> Keep that in mind, Arizonans. <laughs> and by pigs, you mean the girl at the end of the bar at two. <laughs> Take me to full of burnouts. Well, it's, it's against the law for me to feed you <laughs> garbage at the end of the night here, pig. <laughs> why do you keep saying that? Well, you and I both know why you're in the car. Uh, your leftovers. Well, it's like gremlins. You don't want to feed them after midnight. You are, you're what Ooh. I like to call vaginal leftovers. <laughs> like all the others were taken, and then you were the last thing in the fridge. So, I'm hungry. Sorry, pig. Wildly illegal in this state to feed you right now. Now, if Steak 44 was open, I could take you there, because that's not garbage. But you're asking for garbage, and I don't want to go to jail. I just want to have very awkward sex with you and hope you leave. I'll truffle off. <laughs> Something smells good. Let her out. If she finds a truffle, that's good money. A report <laughs> just came out about a 30-year-old guy in Florida who went to Disney World this summer. <laughs> Sorry, just pictured dropping a date off in the woods going, find one. What are you talking about? You know you can do it. Just All right, fine. There's one under here. This guy went to Disney World this summer and managed just every line by posing as a Disney tour guide. For several days in early June, employees noticed there were a bunch of unapproved overrides on an app their VP their VIP tour guides use. No. Oh. Meaning people were cutting in line even though they hadn't paid for a tour. So fraud investigators kept their eyes peeled and on June fourth saw a man he was leading a tour and bypassing the line at the Hollywood Studios Park. It's not clear if he was leading friends or random guests on, on the tour or how many people were with him, but Disney shut it down immediately, and the guy started walking to the parking lot. They followed him to his car. He eventually admitted he had an official Disney World iPad Ooh. that only guides are supposed to have access to. So how, what, what was he doing with it? He stole it. He said his boss lent it to him. And he gave him a name. Um, it turned out he that... He wrote his boss out? Just say you found it. Yeah, no right. kidding. What a jerk. Well, they knew what he was talking about because the person had done it before. Oh. But that's all we know. They kicked him out of the property, did, decided not to press charges. But so long to the iPad lender in that department. Oh, so that dude's done. So oh, he yeah. didn't work at Disneyland. No, but the boss he had had some sort of a hookup. That's yeah. what I was saying. I was wondering where his boss got the iPad. Well, he's handing yeah. him out. Like, yeah, exactly. Where'd that guy get it? Wow. And Disney doesn't mess around with that stuff. Normally, you can't. Like, you're banned from the park when you start screwing around with a mouse. A new study found the happiest states in the U.S. And uh, it's All New England and Well, Hawaii. pandemic was factored in. So, it included stuff like COVID-19 rates and restrictions overall health, oh, career so satisfaction, life expectancy. Empty states. Wyoming. Yeah, Montana. Montana. Uh, yeah, Idaho. All the places nobody gathers. Yeah, the happiest. Utah, Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota's pretty big. Hawaii, yeah. California. No. North Dakota, South Dakota, Idaho, Maryland, there New Jersey, go. and Massachusetts. Jersey? Yeah. Not but the cities. Minnesota, though, too. I mean, especially with all the stuff that happened last year. That's a good point. I don't... And factoring in de- depression and weather, but... Again, yeah. it's uh, – so the – we uh, – Arizona fell in about 27th. Yeah, I think Minnesotans are kind of those rose-colored glasses people. They don't really admit their state's crap. The least <laughs> happiest, West Virginia, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Alaska, and New Mexico. Everywhere in the south, basically. Yeah. Those are the bottom two. Poor, poor states. Yeah. <laughs> the Dakotas – I'm surprised aren't top of the list. But you know who they don't ask? The Native Americans. <laughs> they only ask the, the 
folks off the reservation who's happy. They're not going to go over to these Indian states and go, hey, well, North let's Dakota, do a happy South race. Dakota. Yeah, that's happy. they didn't ask the Indians. That's my point. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, they asked the white people there who have isolated themselves from everyone. North Dakota, there's like cities of 4,000 people, and that's it. The and ones that thrilled. are working on the uh, yeah. oil rigs and stuff. They, I don't know where they work. I just know that there Getting are paid. gaggles of whites that have escaped society. Idaho is the. That is the most segregated thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's beautiful. Uh, my buddy goes up there to that uh, uh, marmalade. What's that place called? The uh, got a goofy name. Every all the white people move there. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. That's the one. And they had some festival, and he, it's nice. He showed me a video of it, and I'm like, you know what's what's why you guys like this so much? Because they're from Gilbert. I'm like, because it's just giant Gilbert. There isn't a black person in the video. They're having a parade and this like public picnic and. It's just that's all where these you go across of, from these, there to Silver Lake, right? Yeah. Toledo is that Hayden Lake? Yeah. Hayden Lake. Hayden that's Lake's right. the big. Yes. Uh, it was a silver mine. Was yeah. the uh, original. These oblivious to the world Mormons walking around like doesn't affect us. We've got an Albertsons and a parade. How bad can life be? And a floating green that's beautiful on that golf course. I'm sure there's some great stuff up there, <laughs> unsullied by those awful people that look different than us. Idaho is creepy. Beautiful, but it's like you see. I had a shot at going there in the radio biz. At that one time, our company, our first owners, you would have had stations in Idaho, it. and he goes, oh. "You," and he says, "I'll fly you there yeah. so you can check it out, see if you like it." And it was in Boise. Yeah, Boise's and it the was least a, lily white, just yeah, because it's, it's kinda, yeah, it's the one that's got people in. Yeah, it. everywhere else is lily you almost Mormon took Boise. White. No, I, I when I went on the visit, I just I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. You were too it was controversial. A fun weekend, probably. <laughs> you were too. Uh, you were too outside the lines. Yeah, I've met people from Idaho directly from Idaho, and it. I, I think Ailey would be more comfortable on our planet. <laughs> the, the GM there was Dick Luminella, and he told a story about he had a date. Witness uh, protection. Does that yeah. translate to shiny bright Dick? Yeah, it does. <laughs> well lit does. Dick. Yep. All right, go ahead. He was awesome. He was talking about he took a date out for drinks and evidently she had spaghetti for uh, lunch earlier oh but god this won't go well he ended up with no- uh, a noodle a couple of noodles on his tie because she uh, did a little uh, spit take and it she threw up on him yeah classy bro <laughs> wow well that's why we he, have that rule in arizona you can't feed a pig they've been married <laughs> for 30 years now well they had to he took her on a date uh-oh thunder horses chimed in about idaho or, uh okay it says, Idaho doesn't like naggy people. I think he misspelled something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Black Listener Thunder Horse. A new poll asks 7,000 Americans, <laughs> have you ever been in a fight? That was the question. To all Americans? 7,000 Americans. Oh, okay. And over a third of us have been in a fight before. 36% said yes, including 23% of women and half of men. 23% of the people said they'd been in more than one fight in their life. Younger people were less likely to say they've been in a fight. Less than a quarter of adults 20, uh, under 25 said yes. Those pussy millennials. <laughs> the age group yeah. that's thrown the most punches? 50 plus. People ours. in their late 30s and mid 40s. Uh, no kidding. Drunk. 44% have been in a fight before. Yeah. What was the last fight you I don't were think in? they're... Like a physical? Have you been in a, 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 a fist fight with an adult? Yeah, Other than Eric, it was Eric. It was in the hallway. Yeah, that, was the, that, was yeah, that was the last, last physical last, fight yeah. you were in <laughs> yeah. with another person as an adult. Are we done? <laughs> but there wasn't a... <laughs> Get off me first. Such a story. Fists were thrown on, um, maybe on one side, but I... Well, I don't know how many fists yeah. got thrown. It was a... It was well, a you were, were on, on his back. back. He was yeah. on his belly on the ground. <laughs> it was a rat king of idiots in the hallway. <laughs> You two were just all tangled up. It was the Did worst. That just happened. It was the worst porn I've ever seen. <laughs> Two adults at yeah. my place Okay, of work. I'm going to have to tell you, both of you, no more fighting at work. <laughs> and they're breathing like I had 2 12 You really girls. had to have that conversation. I, before the next break, they stood in the doorway sweating. Their clothes were <laughs> all... And <laughs> all right, boys. Well, I never thought I'd have to do this. <laughs> but I'm going to take the reins here, and I'm going to tell you. No more fist fighting at work. <laughs> he started it. I know. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll take the hit on that one. Yeah, it's my yeah, fault for yeah, not yeah. establishing that per- beforehand. But didn't know we needed to put up. <laughs> didn't know we needed to put up signs. It's helped the signs. Yeah, I mean, well, we haven't had one since I laid down the law. <laughs> <laughs> that was your last fist fight as an adult. Yep. I don't know if my last fight counts when I bounce that old man off the front of that car. That counts. Does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. physical. Wasn't a fight. How long ago was that? that was I, seven or eight years so ago. So I wouldn't necessarily consider mine, then, if you're saying that. Yours was a fight. Because I filled no, up was, a, a Samsonite yours suitcase. Was a fight. And, yeah, but there were blows thrown before. It doesn't matter how fast you finished him. My guy didn't even hit me. He just touched me, and I bounced him off a car. His wife was the one I wanted to punch, but I couldn't. And then he came up and tried to grab my shoulder, and I grabbed his face and threw it in the, in the hood of his car at a Walmart parking lot. Jesus. Oh, it was a good one. This lady lost her mind on me. I was saying some horrible stuff back to her, and then he got out of the car and walked up behind me, and when his hand hit my shoulder, in one move, I just grabbed his back and his face and smashed it into the front of his car, and then, <laughs> oh, my, you've assaulted my husband. I'm like, well, he touched me first. There's cameras all over here. I'm calling sec- some Walmart security show. We're going to have to hang around here and wait for the police. And I'm like, you're not police? No. I'm like, see ya. <laughs> I left. This is pretty crazy. Uh, Angelica Salgado, um, her daughter was kidnapped by her husband at the time when she was two years old. So it was 14 years ago. The daughter was two. He, uh, yeah, he, he took off, headed to Mexico, and... Um, just recently, she receives a message from the lady that tracked her down on Facebook and said, uh, I think I know I can get you in touch with your daughter. Wait, she just quit looking? Well, she couldn't. She didn't know how to contact her over in Mexico. Yeah, I mean, you're limited on what you could do. Not really. It's Mexico. They disappeared. Hmm. Suppose anyway. So. You'd think a mom would just keep going. They were reunited after 14 years. She uh, met them at the U.S.-Mexico board. She called, contacted the uh, police, and they coordinated with the federal agencies to develop a plan to intercept the uh, victim and confirm it was Jackie. But so they, never, the they got the kid. Yeah. Um, yeah? You said it was 14 years ago she was two. Yeah. Or that was on – she was taken on September 2nd, 14 years ago in 2007. You said she was two. So – no, she was us. She would be. Um, I don't know how old she'd be now. You said she was two to start. She was five. Well, are you sure? <laughs> he looked like he made that up. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. no, because she's nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Somewhere along the lines, did he not say that she was two yeah. in the story? I was trying to follow along and do the math. I have thrown you for a loop in your storytelling. <laughs> but they can't. Uh, they ha- still can't track down the husband. She doesn't know where the guy who kidnapped her is, and she stayed in Mexico the whole time? Yeah, with the dad. The dad. Then she doesn't know where he is? No, they can't find him. The daughter, this doesn't make any sense. The daughter was with the dad the whole time. The daughter started searching for her mom where her real mom was because she was, you know. Follow me. She went to Mexico with her dad. Yep. She's 19 now. She starts looking for her mom. Assumed she stayed with her dad down in Mexico the whole time. Yes. She doesn't know where he is now. No, she might know That's where he is. That's what I'm saying. Jesus but the Christmas, he is Moe and Larry ooh, and Curly. The authorities don't know. Where ask the girl. She's claiming she doesn't know where <laughs> he is. That's what I'm asking you. When did this turn into Abbott and Costello? This is who's on first. I just, the flesh. If she knows where the dad is, it doesn't matter if the authorities do. Question one, detective. Hey, girl who's been with this guy for 19 years, where is he? I don't know. How do you not know? Why did you stay in Mexico? Who were you with? Where was your last known residence with this man? It's easy to disappear in Mexico. <laughs> All right. So she just doesn't know where it is who kidnapped her. Yeah. I mean, she's, uh, you know, he, he's like, you're, you're old stayed. enough now. You're 18. Okay. So he let her go when she's 18. You're on your own. Yeah. Same rules apply in Mexico. 18, you're an adult now. Probably go earlier sometimes. Don't tell anybody where I am for any reason whatsoever. In fact, I'm just going to go away. Stitches get stitches. And you're never going to see me again because now you're 18. You don't need me anymore. So adios, amigo. I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. Now I'm going to look for my mom. <laughs> this is, Brady, this is maybe your worst storytelling ever <laughs> of all time. And that's saying something. Put that, that is, in the bottom of the barrel. That is saying a lot. Because she started off two. 14 years later, she's 19. The dad that abducted her that she stayed with is missing again. She found her mom, though. I don't remember the two things. Now, now, here's the, here's the crazy I part. Hear, I didn't hear the two. Well, I even reiterated the 
the, the daughter was two. Yes. Like, okay. I actually said that. I heard you saying that, but I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember saying two. But I Maybe said the daughter was two. two. That's why I was asking. Oh, Abbott. <sighs> Who's on first? Yeah, nobody. <laughs> Nobody's on first. It's a no-hitter. No one will ever be on first. There's no reason for defense. The, the offense didn't bring a bat. So she found her mom. After stopped, 14 years. But mom stopped looking for her with your, uh, well, it's awfully easy to disappear in Mexico. No point in looking down there. But she managed to find her own mother from Mexico with Mexican resources. Through Facebook and right, stuff. Oh, right. Social, mom couldn't yeah. have done that. She had a Facebook page? Mom did. The daughter didn't, but she found her on Facebook. Yeah, she got despite on. Despite not having a page. God, sometimes I hate you. I'm lost. <laughs> hey, of course you're lost. The story makes no sense. I'm trying to help. Well, when aren't you lost? <laughs> oh, now oh. it's your fault. Oh. My son. Oh, please. Oh. Yeah, I agree. Roll the tape back. You know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yes. I've said it Go to, to someone. Tape. I've said fight it. In the hallway. Yeah, I'm going to say. I've said it to people Don't in your chair before. Again. Kick his ass. <laughs> no fighting. If there was a fighting rule, I'd, I'd allow it now. <laughs> you put the sign up. I want you to listen to you tell that story in the beginning about the two, two-year-old, two five-year-old who's now 19 that <laughs> somehow or not disappeared. And I said, oh, Mom doesn't even look anymore. Well, it's Mexico. Yeah. Everybody's blind in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Kirby gets abducted, and they're like, we're pretty sure she's in Mexico. Well, well, that's well, we'll enough, find her. That's enough of that. No. <laughs> you're going to look around Mexico for her. Yeah, you're not going to get far. You don't. You, so you just call off the search. You're, you're no John Walsh. You might r- drive around the neighborhood going, Adam, twice, and then uh, he's not out there. I did my you part. You would look like crazy for your, your daughter abducted, and it would be an international search because he, he crossed international borders. The mom didn't care that much. It happens a lot, John. <laughs> Hard to say. Hate to I don't say. believe it. And does. your knowledge, your <laughs> when you run to the border, it happens a lot. <laughs> All right, don't bring this into the Taco Bell world because I know where you're going. <laughs> yep. Yep. Look, that story yep. you just told. I'm gonna re- give me those papers, and I'm gonna read that at home later, and I'm gonna get a good story out of this because <laughs> okay. I know that was not how it was written. A two-year-old, five-year-old, now 19, 14 years ago. Oh, turned no, into- I want that one. Oh, Here, this, this one. one. That's another one. Okay. I don't need it anymore. You just handed me the wrong story. I'm done with it. Speaking of Taco Bell, Kyle John. Pierce said, he said two. I was confused as you, and I got mixed up. How is See? she 19, 14 years old? Yeah. Hey, by the way, I think Toledo's dad is Mexican, and Brady is the- <laughs> Brady's been the lead detective. Brady's been involved in it. Brady's the lead detective. <laughs> we think you went to Mexico, sir. Well, what do we do next? Well, that's sort of a black hole. <laughs> we don't like looking for things there. Give so up. I think you should give up. Uh, have you had a vasectomy? No. Then make a new kid. Because this <laughs> one's gone. Over. The, seriously, it's like being at the bottom of the ocean. No one has ever been found in Mexico before. Ever. Taco Bell's oh, testing a taco subscription service. Any questions? Between uh, 10 bucks a month, you can sign up. Get subscribe. the Taco Bell app. And um, you basically can get a taco every day, one free taco for ten bucks a month. Yep, from five to ten bucks. Yeah, you it would cost less it. than that if yeah. you got thirty taco. One taco a day is like sixty cents, right? The yeah, options. Well. No, they're a dollar fifty now. They are. Oh yeah, dollar thirty dollar thirty nine to two dollars and thirty nine cents. <laughs> for a taco? Cents. Well, here are your options. Oh. It's a crunchy taco, standard a spicy potato soft taco, Ugh. crunchy taco supreme. Soft Taco Supreme, Doritos Lo- Locos Taco. There you go. And you Brady can Supreme Palmer. that. Stop it. <laughs> right now it's being test marketed in uh, Tucson. Of course it is. <laughs> so they're making it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> so it's a country club of Taco Bell. You have to Bell go Man. there between uh, three and seven times a month and you'll have a cup. You know the day I can't be with you anymore is when you say I've got a Taco Bell membership. You want to go to my <laughs> I got a membership. Taco Bell? <laughs> you can't get in with these prices. Only I can get you in. I'm a Taco Bell Platinum member. Uh Hershey's just rolled out their new holiday flavors, their new candies. Uh they unveiled the lineup for 2021. Pumpkin spice. It's quite exciting. Reese's peanut brittle so uh, you can put that together. That sounds pretty good. And then gingerbread Kit Kats. I mean, say goodbye to your teeth with no, the Reese's brittle thing. Yeah, oh yeah. It's going to crush a bunch of soft-toothed Americans. Yeah, I'm out in a gingerbread one. Oof. 
are also debuting mm. sugar cookie flavored Hershey bars and the mm. new vanilla Whoppers called put, Snowballs. Oh, Whoppers! I was thinking of the burger, the yeah. little round. Can't balls. put that peanut brittle in Payson. Wait, just, they have a candy called Snowballs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're unaware of the dictionary. <laughs> Do they have the Whopper felching machine as well? That's in development. The delicious. It's an R and D right Do now. Do they have cream pies? Porn's ruined. R and D. So that girl in Mexico again. She's yeah. she's dead. She's alive. Well, to, to you though, she would have died the second she got into Nogales. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. right. It's a write off. As soon as you walk through, it's a write off. <laughs> I want Brady. To, this is a good one. Michael says I want Brady to rewrite the movie Taken. <laughs> <laughs> You've been taken, and probably to Mexico, so Daddy loves you, but we're never going to see each other again. Count on it. I don't know why Brady's saying this. Finding Kirby would be so easy for Brady. All <laughs> he had to do is follow the, all the people <laughs> taking pictures of the you gigantic footprints. <laughs> Adios mio, chupicabra. That's my daughter. <laughs> chupicabra. It's not a chupicabra, you guys. Anyway, bring her back to the border. I'm not going down there. I lost a set of keys in Mexico. <laughs> Gone forever. Good luck finding a kid. Fireball, Fireball is releasing a mini keg. Has 115 shots in it. It'll be in the stores very soon. Brett, what's your new favorite drink? My new favorite drink? Yeah, the Irish car bomb. Oh, yeah. Uh, followed and by a... You know, <laughs> and the, the, this is a good one. Uh, you go into a bar and you order a car bomb. The Paul Walker. <laughs> yeah, and then you chase it with a fireball and it's, you order a Paul Walker. <laughs> I'm going to do that today. I'm going to go see him with you the are, gonna, Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Do it with her. Don't do it with a stranger. <laughs> Next time I'm at the bridge, doing some biz at the bridge, I'll ask Holly, the bartender, for a Paul Walker and see if she knows what that is. Because that's funny. I think my friend Mike fired that one over. It's an Irish car bomb with a fireball chaser. I'm doing that. That's just wrong. I got a wild world story with a video. Okay. And go. Hello, my friends. I'm Brady Bogan, and this is your wild, wild world story. And Brady video. <laughs> well, exactly as it was pr- pr- pronounced. <laughs> Brought to us by This Brady. happened in Mexico, so it's over. <laughs> it's lost. It's eight o'clock. No, it was in it's the eight Netherlands. O'clock. Time out. Time out, everyone. Eight Time o'clock. The De Niro double down word alert has gone off. And today it's MacDonald for a good pal Norm. Not a friend of ours, but just everybody's buddy. The funniest man uh, on the planet for most of my adult life is gone. And uh, just a tip of the cap. Today, you get $1,000. MacDonald. It's not McDonald. It's MacDonald. It's letter means Norm MacDonald is here. MacDonald. Uh, and that's at 97936. Throw in MacDonald. And I don't know about the – you don't have to capitalize the D and all that stuff, right? No. You didn't do that. Yeah. So just MacDonald, one word, uh, in an hour. Somebody else won 1000 bucks in the De Niro double down, and we'll do another double up on Friday. There you go. MacDonald. Brady, sorry. Go ahead. This happened in a farm in uh, Gelderland in the Netherlands. The farmer, Jaap Beets, is his name. They had a couple of chickens. They were caught on surveillance. He had a camera set up on his house, and the chicken was running around the yard, and a hawk swoops in oh on the chicken. Another chicken, chicken comes hunk. in, tries to break the hawk up off the uh, chicken, doesn't work, and then a billy goat comes in. Gets it done. And frees the chicken. From the hawk. Here we go, Jim. <laughs> Get Kelly into one this one. Good it's a, it's a little power kick. move by the Billy Goat, too. But you thought... It's a power kick. Does the Billy Goat just It doesn't kick? power kick. You know, he rams. But he does it... Oh, yeah, it's just he uses his head. Yeah. But he, does he do it with, uh, uh, like, justice in mind, or is he just breaking it all up? He's breaking it up. He's not mad like at he's one or the other. he's protecting the chicken okay. more so than anything. Right. So he knows the chicken but well. you wouldn't think the chicken would survive after the first, you know, puff of feathers when the hawk hits... It hits hard. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's you know, the job risk of being a chicken. It is. Outside hoop. Oh, yeah, you're just wandering around. It's like, it's like being a kid in Mexico at age two, four, Good five. Christ, <laughs> Amavig. That's a long commercial. Yeah, pushing some drugs before the, yeah, uh, the video. Yeah, probably mewling some, mewling some coca. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't think they'll ever find the dad? The girl just came from his house. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm not a detective, but this is the easiest seems, mystery in the world. Easy. The girl found her mom on Facebook, which means she's got a Facebook page, which means mom was never looking. She was living with the dad that abducted her, but Brady's convinced the dad's just gone forever. Why don't you ask the girl? In this video, All right. the chicken is five years old. <laughs> All right, here we go. It deserves to go. 
All right, no there's sound because it's surveillance. Just a regular chicken just sitting there in the field. Whoa, 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 he sees it. Oh, oh he run. Oh, the hawk gets hold of it. There's feathers flying, everybody. Another chicken comes over. Get off my wife, says other chicken. And here comes a Billy Goat. Good night, nurse. Oh, he's just, he oh, is. Man. He's protecting yeah. that chicken. Oh, yeah. Back in the coop. Nice work, oh, Billy man. Goat. It's a pretty Billy Goat, too. Look at the sh- like shinies for whatever's on a Billy Goat. Look, and he kind of checks out the chicken to make sure he's all right. That's fast. Well, now it's good work. That's your wild, wild world. Uh, that's oh. in 2016. <laughs> all right. It makes me feel bad that farm animals are. It really is like Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> They're all pals. We got a couple of uh, more radio videos. Okay. I'm We're going down with the, the first one. Okay. First one is a little, um, not, it's field hockey. Okay. I believe, but a guy's playing with some uh, women. Oh, so it's a bloodbath. It might be the coach playing with <laughs> it's the It's a bloodletting. So it's 45 to nothing. Men's team. So we're watching the WNBA yeah. all over again. I'm bet on some WNBA tonight. He's he's playing nice for the most part, but right. you, you oh, he can't lays help one it. out. This is going to be oh, gonna here some comes up. He's moving a little faster than the rest of the girls. Oh, shit! She needs to lift her head when she's running. It, it's different. It's that, uh... He makes I the call turn. it field hockey, He's, but... I don't know. Oh, man. He field hockey? What else would you call it? Levels her. Well, I thought the field hockey had more of a... A hook, and then this one is... Or is that lacrosse? It. Oh! You no, know, lacrosse, they keep it up like oh, okay. that. Wow. I don't think it's field hockey either. Yeah, I think you can actually... When, well, maybe. They, they got a net, though. They got like a scooper. Maybe this is lacrosse. But he tries to hit... Well, no, maybe. it's definitely not lacrosse. He gobbles her up in one shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what... You guys hey, want the up. equality. Hey, Megan Rapinoe, this is what you've got to look forward to. <laughs> you want equality? Let's stick you on the field at the same time. Guess who's never going to play a minute of soccer again? Drunk We're going to go with all men. They would have to pass a rule that said, because they talked about that 10 years ago. It's like, there'll be a woman in the NBA someday. I'm like, no, the only way it happens if they pass a rule where one has to be on the court at all times. That, that would be the only way women would ever play in the NBA is if they said, all right, we have to give up one position to a woman. Both teams have to have a girl on the court at all times because otherwise any coach in his right mind would be like, uh, all right, uh, D- DeAndre, DeAndre, DeQuante, Angela, <laughs> and, uh, and Devin, you guys are all my five starters. In fact, Angela, why don't you sit down? Other DeAndre, why don't you get in there and play for Angela for a little while? What am I thinking as a coach putting a girl out there? <laughs> She 20. might be good, but she's still the worst player in the NBA by... Tony Danz is the coach. <laughs> yeah, Angela. <laughs> Jonathan, Mona. Here's my starting five. Jonathan, Mona, Angela, Tony, uh, and DeAndre. <laughs> the next one is drunk people doing things. And as a coach, what do you tell them? Jonathan, always pass to DeAndre. <laughs> we practice. Angela never gets the ball. I don't understand... Any of that argument. And then when you see that kind of stuff and you realize a woman, well, like we celebrate that dumb kicker from, uh, what is it, Vanderbilt? Yep. Yeah. And we're like, oh, woman on the field, why are you such a sexist? And I'm like, because she's going to be eating out of a tube. Caleb will be a better athlete at the end of the season oh. <laughs> than a girl on a football field. And no one has the guts to say it because we're all so politically correct. There is no possible way a woman will play contact sports with men in any way unless they make new rules to say you can't touch them. That's it. Kick the ball, get off the field. Bad snap, yeah. run off the run field. Run away because you don't want the butt end of that. And we've always said it. It's like a guy in the heart in the heat of competition isn't going to do a gender check before he lays your ass out if you're going for the ball too. This dude played some amateur field hockey and got a little ahead of himself and, and spined a chick on the court or the pitch or whatever they call it. You just don't. So can we stop the argument immediately. You're not even Steven on the physical thing. Knock it off. There's a reason they differentiate. There's a reason there's two levels. That's it. I'd take a D-League team from the NBA and pull somebody up before I'd let Angela play. We got to let one of you on the field. Ugh. Title IX's the worst thing that ever happened to sports. <laughs> <laughs> Just give them scholarships for being ladies. Was that enough? But I want to play basketball. Yeah, but nobody wants to watch that. I also want to play basketball, but no one would pay for it. It's not a viable thing. 
The next radio video is a dude uh, shotgunning a beer off his bro's forehead, trying to open the can that way. We got it in slow motion. It's Whoa. Oh, he just hits a guy. First one, one no full. good. Second one, oh, takes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Kind of How are those teeth? <laughs> oh. Let's play it again because I have sound on this now. He throws it in the air to shut up, and then he hits him in the head with a full beer can in oh. slow motion. And then, oh. and then the bro down happens. <laughs> then the dude decides to lift his face up upon the second swing and takes one. Well... We'll land it the last one. You know who deserves that beer in the face is whoever sold that kid that shirt. Yeah. (laughs) Girl's getting hurt. All right. We got a bar celebration going on. So the one girl standing on a chair. She's a little thick. And they're singing. They're doing a little sing along. That chair's not going to make it much longer. I can tell you right now. (laughs) It's not it's not her getting that's not the chair's fault or the manufacturer. That's the fault of chocolate cake. <laughs> that girl's big. Yeah, make sure next time she's on a bench. What are they singing? Oh, no. uh, uh, it's always funny. Uh, her spanks, her spanks are are lying to everyone. The chair told the truth. <laughs> The chair gives way. Oh, that's got to be rough for a girl's ego. She took two hours to get ready just to have furniture say nothing. Two hours not for me. No Celine Dion. Oh, is that what that You're was? You're welcome. Yeah. No, no reason to get that excited over Celine Dion ever either. That must be in Canada. By the way, my wife texted in. Oh, yeah? She said, he did say two and welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ronnie, we have no idea how you've done it. Communicating's got to be miserable. And I hope you're never in Mexico, Ronnie, because Brady ain't looking. <laughs> I just told her you need to listen better. So. That's right. That's exactly what she needs to do. <laughs> All the rest of us also have that problem. Yeah. You did say two. She was two. And so I started to do the math because I was very interested in this date my C story you were creating. I was a couple years off. Unfortunately, yes. uh, at the end, Keith Morris said, but since it was Mexico, we all decided never to look for the girl. It's too hard. Mexico is big. <laughs> Keith. Give up. Oh. Then she went on her own. Found her mother who wasn't looking for her anymore anyway. Ooh. Authorities never thought to ask the missing girl where her dad was. <laughs> who she'd lived with for the last 18 years. No need. She was in Mexico. Mexico. Oh, yeah. okay. The 19-year-old Call has it been off. missing since she was two for 14 years. <laughs> the math just didn't add up, so people quit. No one cared. <laughs> I, and I'm so curious now about what really happened. <laughs> I wish you wrote Cliff's notes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Eggleston's already got your picture up on a on the unsolved. <laughs> Tonight, an unsolved mystery. <laughs> a news reporter has a stroke on the air and tries to tell people about a missing girl in Mexico. <laughs> That's right, Robert Stack. Fourteen years ago, a two-year-old who's now nineteen was missing. None of it makes sense, Brady. We went down to Mexico to find the 14-year-old, 2-year-old, 19-year-old, and her dad. But we just stopped looking after delicious tacos were on sale. (laughs) Too busy. (laughs) It's Mexico, he says. Too big. (laughs) But she found her mom in a bigger country. (laughs) Doesn't make any sense. Your story was horrible, and I am so lost in it. That I won episode two. This is what we need. Brady's, all these murder podcasts. Follow up. Brady trying to tell the story of murders on a podcast. Would, it would make everybody wish COVID was back. Why are you asking that question? I would want you to just, I don't even want to be in the room. Brady, buy him some Brady's murder mystery podcast show. Where we just give you, like you've no, done no research. And give we you the premise. give you the premise and the thing. And you try to tell people what happened. By the time the first minute's over, people will be like, "Wow, how's she nineteen? She was four, she was two, and now fourteen years later, she's nineteen. None of this is. It's Mexico. They they use metrics. Different okay, calendar. None of this makes any sense. They age in metrics. <laughs> uh, that is true. Devin says, "Hey, in Brady's defense, you guys are being a little rough. If you turn a two around, it looks a little bit like a five. <laughs> 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 so maybe he was just dizzy. 
He's dyslexic. Uh, MacDonald is the word you need to text. 97936. Jay Gutentag, the contest is open to you as well. Yeah. MacDonald for uh, Norm MacDonald. The, the, the world got a big dent in the funny bone yesterday. Huge one uh, when Norm passed away. So MacDonald is today's word. 97936. Uh, uh, do that right now and get yourself a chance at 1000 bucks in the De Niro Double Down. There goes your Brady Report all the way to Mexico. I want it. You really, really, really want it? Yes, I really want it. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.